Welcome back, Ganja Farmers. It's time for episode 904 of the Grow From Your Heart podcast. I'm coming to you today with an update and possibly a correction from a previous episode. Many of you watched my auto-watering episode. Thank you for all of the feedback on that auto-watering episode. That is one of my most watched and most commented and most liked videos. I do appreciate that feedback, so thank you. I do come with an update. Um, I built an auto watering system. I've been using that system that I showed you guys in the video. Uh, there is one small detail, maybe a couple of details that I have overlooked. Um, I've added a piece to my auto watering system. Previously, the system that I showed you would end at this point. Let me take this off here and show you what I've added. The previous uh, episode had the watering system stopping here, and this would connect to a hose, and then that hose would run to another attachment that would complete the system. I found by doing that when the hose was running straight off of here going up, it would kink a lot. I didn't like that. It was causing me problems, and quite frankly, it was pissing me off. I don't need it kinked. I need this to work when I'm gone. So my test runs, I noticed it was kinking sometimes, just that hose was flexible. They do sell a hose that doesn't uh, kink right there. It's got a spring type thing around it. My quick and easy solution, however, was to add an adapter and put a bend in it. So I easily took an adapter. It's an adapter that kind of fits on this fitting, which we're going to talk about that in a minute. I took an adapter. I took more tubing. I took an elbow. And then I sent that elbow out this way. Then my hose attachment is here. Now you see what happens. I'll attach this to here. We're going to talk about this more in a second. Attach this onto here. Of course, use that tape or use the proper size fitting is what we're going to get to. But we screw that onto here. Make sure all these fittings are tight, secure. Don't over tighten them. You will strip these things. But now what happens, instead of sticking straight up and my hose getting kinked, I have now used, uh, I did an adapter to more of the Floriflex tubing adapters. Uh, that's how I'm getting to the tubing. Then I did an elbow. And then the reason this points to this way is now my hose is coming off this way. I don't have to kink the hose. It's already curved. It's already coming off. So that was my major update that I wanted to teach you and share with you. It's one or two more parts. It won't be a big expense. It will be easy to fix and it will save you a headache. So in the first episode, I missed a detail. Here's the thing that I would add on to it. Let me check my notes and make sure we got this right. Um, so something that I should add to you, uh, add to this is pay attention to thread sizing. Um, I use the wrong size threads on part of my design. This is going to work, but it would have been better if I paid more attention. Um, you'll notice that this says, um, where is it printed on here? This filter says NPT three quarters. What NPT means, and I was taught this by a great listener and a great viewer. Thank you for teaching me. Um, that is uh, national pipe thread. I think this is what he told me that means. So uh, that is when you're working on permanent pipe structure, from what I understand, they will be three quarter NPT, national pipe thread. Is that the fitting in the threads on this piece here? Now, what I realize now that I've done this and I realize that it doesn't fit perfectly is this piece is, uh, I wrote it down, GHT, which is garden hose thread, which is to be replaced, moved off and on quite often, quite frequently. So this piece and this piece actually have different threads. When you look at it, you can see it visually. Um, I didn't pay attention. I didn't understand that. Um, somebody in the audience, the one of the watchers, one of the viewers was kind enough, polite enough to educate me on that fact. So I did go from one type of thread to another without the appropriate adapter. I was a caveman and I used tape to seal my shit off. Don't do that. Um, when you buy this at Floriflex, they sell the appropriate sized adapter that goes here. I just didn't see it when I was shopping. As soon as I hit buy, it showed it to me on the card. It was like, you should have bought this. And I was like, oh, I should have bought that. But I'd already purchased these other pieces, so that's just how it goes. I kind of use the wrong parts, you guys. I recommend you use the right sizes. However, this will work. You'll notice the garden hose fits on here. It won't fit on this piece very well. This grommet is made better for the garden hose than this piece, and you'll notice that they are different sized threads. So something to pay attention is 
those different threads. There's one that is called NPT, National Pipe Thread, and one that is GHT, Garden Hose Thread. That is a big difference. Most of your metal stuff is going to be the NPT and a lot of your plastic and the stuff that seals. So the NPT tapers, it actually gets uh, wider as the thing screws on. So it tightens that way and it's a metal on metal seal. From what I understand, I'm new at this. The GHT is all the same size and it seals by using a rubber grommet at the end. That's why your garden hose has the rubber grommet in there. That's what seals flush and makes it tight. Two different types of fittings. This could have been better. I kind of gave you bad advice. It's going to work. Don't get mad at me, but I need to come clean and tell you I done fucked up. And thanks for the people that taught me that I done fucked up. I don't want you to fuck up too. So here's your opportunity to fix that. So the first piece is add the bend so you don't get the kink. You'll prevent this move. You see what I'm going to do? I don't want to bend this tubing, but you'll prevent this by just adding an adapter, a piece of Floriflex attachment. This is how you get from the three quarter. Uh, this is one of these actually, just the other end. I'm using it the other way. And then I use an elbow to create the bend that I want. And then this naturally just kind of curves down on its own because of gravity and because it was rolled up. And then this is going to go to that leader hose, which will get to the manifold. So that's the first adjustment is to make this. The second one is to realize that these are different size fittings. I did the wrong shit in here. I taught you wrong. I'm a bad teacher. I apologize. Slap on the wrist. No dab for me. Yeah, right. But don't make the same mistake I did. Now, the next thing that people asked me was why... Am I doubling up on pressure regulators? I talk about the pressure regulator here and the emitters that I'm using also have the pressure regulator. That's a very good question. And keep in mind, we're learning together. I'm new at this. This is not my area of expertise. So I appreciate the comments and the education that I'm getting from you guys. But why pressure regulator and regulator regulated emitters? The regulator, you'll notice, is the first piece of my equipment after the pump. It goes pump, regulator. Why? because that pump sends the water through so fast that it'll blow right past my filter. So the first idea is to get that water to actually work in my filter. I have to slow it down and regulate that pressure or it's gonna blow so much pressure right through here, it's gonna press, push the sediment right through, it's not even gonna filter. That is the first reason. The second reason is I need to slow down that pressure coming off the pump so I don't blow any of these fittings. That's a lot of pressure. These aren't meant to take as much pressure as my pump sends on its own. So I'm kind of slowing it down, relieving some of that pressure here. Before it even makes it to anything, I'm giving it control. I'm throttling it. So I don't blow here, 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 here. There's a lot of parts that could go wrong here. And I don't want that shit happening. It pumps a lot of water really quickly. And if I'm here, I can stop it. If I happen to be gone, if I'm out doing stuff and the timer goes and it comes on and one of these pops... There'd be 20 gallons of water in the floor somewhere, and that is never good. So that's the first reason. I'm trying to regulate the pressure so I don't erupt any of my elbows, so I don't blow the emitters out of the tubing. That's the first reason, and so that the, uh, the pump or the filter actually gets an opportunity to work. That's why the first pressure regulator. Um, and, oh, also, then it makes it even for the... Uh, um, some of my stuff got cut off like in my last episode, you probably saw that, but it makes the water pressure even all throughout the system. So you don't get that sputtering so that the water doesn't run around and then you get some emitters that are not getting water even to that part of the system. It makes the water run evenly throughout the entire system and consistently. I don't get ups and downs and it takes the air out of the system. It makes it smooth for me. Then why are the emitters pressure regulated so that they get an even amount of water also? Um, it's just another, it's a fail safe. It may be redundant, but I'm minimizing the pressure through the system so I don't blow it apart. Then I use the regulated emitters to get consistent, even flow. Once I do get to that part of the system, it's just double throttling. It might be redundant, but if I fail at one point, I won't fail at the other. And this has a big purpose. This is to not blow the entire system apart. That's what that is for. Um, let me read, make sure I'm getting that consistent. Even watering seems redundant, but it makes sense to me. It keeps things even. Um, now the third point, um, I got a lot of comments on this episode and I appreciate it. I enjoy it. Keep in mind, I started by saying, um, this is adjustable and adaptable. Your idea is not wrong. If it works, my idea is not wrong because it works for me. I did fuck up using the wrong parts, but guess what? It still worked. Um, this is the, one of the, one of my favorite parts about growing ganja is that it is uh, there's no wrong way to do it. If you are happy with your outcome, if at the end of the grow, you get to put some of your weed in the bong and light it on fire and smoke it and blow it out and go, 
I'm stoned and happy. That's the most important part. However you get there doesn't matter to me. I'd prefer you don't use crazy pesticides. I'd prefer you don't steal electricity. I'd prefer you don't do unethical shit and don't hurt anybody. Be a good person is the bottom line. But if you do all that, get to the finish line. However you get there, it's none of my business. As long as we're getting to the finish line and we're happy, do it a little bit differently than me. Do it a lot differently than me. Do it some of the way I do it. So Do it some of the way that uh, Kevin Jodry taught you. Do it some of the way that Jinx Proof taught you. Do it some of the way the Dude Grows taught you. Combine all that. Master it. Get it the way that you want it that fits your style, your grow. Don't let anybody tell you that I'm wrong, you're wrong. It's all going to work. So let me pay attention to my notes, my hand itches. Does it mean you're going to get money when your palm itches? Because it does. Write the fucking check. That's nice. Um, there are a million ways to get to the goal as long as you're happy with the outcome. You could do whatever you want. And then I use the analogy, look at musicians. Um, musicians have wildly different setups. If you look at two drummers, I'm six foot five. Uh, I got a buddy named Mikey. He's five two. We can't play each other's drum sets. He can't reach my cymbals. He goes to hit my crashes and he's like, where are they? And when I go to hit his cymbals, they're already there. So I play early. So we've got wildly different setups, but we're both achieving the goal. We're fucking grooving. We're throwing drum beats down. The only person that tells us we're doing it wrong is the guy at Guitar Center that wants to sell us more expensive shit that he likes and I don't even fucking need. But we're doing things totally differently. We're both grooving and getting along and having a good time. So that's the point. Um, get to the fucking finish line the way that you want to get there. Grow from your heart. Breed with love. Most importantly, have fun and enjoy what you're doing. Um, don't let anybody else tell you you're wrong. I mean, they can give you advice and make adjustments. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're being helpful, but love what you're doing in there. Don't let anybody sway you. Don't let anybody fuck with you. Have a good time in that grow. That's the most important part. So I came to you with a correction. I think I covered those corrections. Um, sometimes I'm going to make some mistakes and then I'll do my best to come back and admit that I made a mistake. We'll acknowledge the mistake. Uh, we'll do our best to make a correction and then we'll try our best to move on strong and not make the same mistakes again. You can do the same in life. It's not that hard. Admit it. I fucked up you guys. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, make sure you check out, uh, my sponsors, AC infinity, go to acinfinity.com. Use coupon code Irie army, save yourself 10%. Then, of course, iRedirect.com. There is a Green Friday sale coming to iRedirect.com. That's right. Black Friday is slowly approaching. I'm impatient. I'm going to do Green Friday a week early. That will be November 21st. So make sure you stay tuned. Check iRedirect November 21st for Green Friday. There will be steals, deals, sales, and whatever else you want. Green Friday. I don't know if I called it Black Friday on accident. I'm high as giraffe pussy. Let's wrap up this episode. My throat is burning out. My ADD is kicking in. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pimps, hoes, friends, foes, smokers, growers, clone cutters, pollen chuckers, all of you lovely ganja farmers out there. Once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for trusting me. And again, I do apologize for steering you wrong. Thanks for correcting me. Also, leave a bunch of comments. Let me know what you think about this because I do appreciate the interaction. Um, oh, one more thing to think about. I didn't mention the maintenance. A lot of people have already checked out, but more notes, maintenance, check your emitters on your watering system. Every watering, make sure they're all spraying. I recommend buying a few extra. If one's not spraying, just pop it out, uh, pop out the purple part, put the new emitter on there, go clean that other one, reswap it the next time one gets clogged. Also clean that filter every week. This filter on here, it needs to be cleaned. You unscrew this part, I had it on there kind of tight. I don't want water blasting. You unscrew this, then the filter will pop right out. You could take that out of there. It's a lot of screw and they want it secure. Take that out of there and clean this thoroughly and get inside there and clean that. And then you put it back in there and make sure there's not a disc in there. All right, put it back in there. It fits right into place. Then you pop that back into there, give it a good cleaning, screw it on. Make sure you keep that clean. Then if you're going to use an auto watering system, I recommend finding some sort of product. There are a lot of options available. I'm not sponsored by anybody, but check for a product like Drip Clean or something that will keep your lines clean and push all of the gunk and junk and buildup out of your system. And then occasionally unscrew that blow off valve, run water, maybe some warm water if you can, and possibly some Drip Clean through there. Clean out that system. Maintenance is important. Also check on your pump. Make sure your pump is in good working condition. If you see any gunk getting built up on the outside of that pump guard, be sure to clean that. Clean it as good as you can. All right, that's all I've got for you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pimps and hoes. I'll be back in a week with fresh new content. I want to send a big shout out to my buddy 76 Nuts 
And until next time, take a fat dab and give your mom a hug for me. Time to take another dab. Grab your piece in and hug up on the bed. Ross the is in the lab. Sit back, hug your mom, and relax. Hold up. Roots and wisdom start to show. From the knowledge seeds we grow. Tune in now to hear the vibrance that Jeff in our conscious tribe. He spreads the truth in every word. Every voice must now be heard. Healing like the cannabis will from your heart cure this. Rise up higher, find your way. Grow from your hearts every day. Like a dog Educate and elevate Join the journey, don't be late Open minds to see the truth In the soil lies the proof Rasta Jeff will guide you through In this garden find the new Rise up higher, find your way Grow from your hearts every day Lies the proof. Rasta Jeff will guide you through in this garden. Find the new rise up high.